Factory will deliver the final truss element and the last set of solar array wings to the International Space Station. This 28th mission to ISS will include four spacewalks. The first of the spacewalks will be focused on installing the truss segment and arrays, which will increase the power generating capability of the station and clear the way to enlarge the size of the crew to six full-time residents. The crew of Discovery is a mix of experienced astronauts and first-time space travelers. Air Force Colonel Lee Archambault, who first flew as the pilot of STS-117, will be making his second trip aboard the shuttle as he leads the crew of STS-119. Steve Lindsay, the uh, chief of our astronaut office, is the guy who makes the uh, flight assignments. He gave me this crew, and I'm very, very appreciative. And in a lot of ways, I, I look at this crew and I say, boy, he really stacked the deck in my favor, and I'm very appreciative for each and one of these guys. Navy Commander Tony Antonelli will make his first voyage into space as the pilot of Discovery. Antonelli will be responsible for orbiter systems operations, shuttle robotic arm operations, and will also fly the shuttle as it undocks from the station near the end of the mission. Serving as Mission Specialist 1 will be Educator Joseph Acaba. Acaba spent two years in the Peace Corps as an environmental awareness promoter and five years teaching math and science to middle school and high school students in Florida. He is making his first space flight and will take two spacewalks during the mission. Veteran astronaut Steve Swanson is making his second journey into space aboard Discovery as Mission Specialist 2. Swanson, who performed two spacewalks during STS-117 in 2007, will serve as the lead spacewalker during this mission. Mission Specialist 3 is Richard Arnold, an educator who began teaching in 1993. Arnold taught biology, marine environmental science, and mathematics to students in Morocco, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, and Romania. Teaching is... Uh... It's a, it's a great profession. Um, you get to go in every day and uh, mentor kids and, and work with kids. And um, it's a really, really rewarding thing to, to run into a kid somewhere, to get an email out of the blue and say, hey, I, I just finished medical school. Arnold is also an aquanaut who served as a mission specialist in Aquarius, the world's only undersea laboratory. Arnold will perform three spacewalks during the STS-119 mission. John Phillips will be returning to space with more prior spaceflight experience than the rest of his crewmates combined. Phillips first flew on STS-100 in 2001 and served a six-month tour on the International Space Station in 2005. Phillips will perform robotic arm operations and lead the transfer of cargo from Discovery to the station. Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Koichi Wakata will accompany the STS-119 crew to the station. Wakata is making his third trip into space and will remain on the station and serve as flight engineer on Expedition 18 after Discovery departs. Discovery will bring home current Expedition 18 flight engineer Sandy Magnus, who has been a resident on ISS since STS-126 arrived at the station last November. Over the past year, one new connecting node, Harmony, and two new international partner laboratories, the European Columbus and the Japanese Kibo, have been added to the space station, expanding its capacity for science experiments. The S-6, or Starboard 6 truss, with its set of large solar arrays, will complete the backbone of the station and help provide the power needed to support the new laboratories and its soon-to-be-expanded crew of six astronauts. Once the segment is installed, the station's completed truss will measure 335 feet, more than the length of an entire football field. The two solar array wings each have 115-foot-long arrays for a total wingspan of 240 feet. They will generate 66 kilowatts of electricity, enough to provide about 30 2,800-square-foot homes with power. With the recent addition of the new laboratories to the station, getting the massive S6 truss out of the shuttle's payload bay presents a unique challenge. 
you're looking at a very large payload, it weighs about as much as a school bus. That's about 40 feet long that we have in our payload bay. And so because of the configuration of the space station, we're not able to pick out the payload with the shuttle's robotic arm. So we'll actually have to use the robotic arm that's up on the space station. So what we have to do is um, Sandy Magnus and I driving the space station robot arm will pick the truss up out of the payload bay. Then we will hand it off to the space shuttle robot arm. And they will hold it for us while the little railroad car that our robot arm is based on moves out to another position uh, way out on the starboard side of the station. It's at that point the, the station robotic arm can then re-grapple the truss and then maneuver to what's called an overnight park position, an ideal position for thermal uh, reasons uh, where we're going to keep that uh, truss segment overnight. The first spacewalk will be performed on flight day five. Swanson and Arnold will work with the crew inside to help install the waiting truss segment. Phillips, working at the space station's robotic workstation, will maneuver the truss into position and hold while the spacewalking astronauts make their way to the installation site. Once we get there, we will direct John on in and give him any kind of uh, guidance on how he needs to change the current attitude or position of it so it's going to match up perfectly when it comes on into the S5. It's going to be a lot like uh, backing a car into the garage. John and uh, Kuichi will be flying the robotic arm and we'll kind of be giving them directions. You know, come on back a little to the right, a little to the left, and uh, they'll go ahead and dock it and then we'll go around, rotate and drive some bolts and attach it. The spacewalkers will then connect umbilicals, remove thermal covers, and release and unstow the solar array blanket boxes used to store the accordion-like arrays. They will then prepare the truss's photovoltaic radiator for deployment. On flight day seven, Swanson will be joined by Akaba for the second spacewalk of the mission. They will prepare batteries on the P6 truss for replacement on a later mission, deploy a cargo carrier attachment system, install fluid jumpers between the P1 and P3 truss segments, and deploy a payload attachment system to the S3 truss. It will be all hands on deck on flight day eight as the astronauts take a break from spacewalking to deploy the new solar arrays. John's going to employ basically the entire shuttle team as well as a couple of space station crew members to look at to be focused on and looking at various points on the solar array wing as we deploy it. We got 12 TV monitors up looking at different views. We got one guy on the shuttle, six guys on the station, and, I, and it's a big team effort. Once the arrays are fully deployed, the crew will turn its attention to preparations for the third spacewalk on flight day nine. On this spacewalk, Akaba and Arnold will relocate a small platform known as a CETA cart that moves along a rail system attached to the station's truss. The cart will be used with the future truss battery replacement activity. Arnold will then reconfigure one cover on the Canadian special purpose dexterous manipulator, Dexter, and remove another cover from one of its electronic units. When that task is complete, Arnold will lubricate one of the two end effectors of the space station robotic arm, duplicating the work on the other robotic hand conducted by spacewalker Shane Kimbrough during the STS-126 mission. The fourth and final spacewalk will take place on flight day 11, as Swanson and Arnold install antennas and prepare two more payload attachment systems to the S3 truss segment. They will then collect detailed imagery of a radiator blanket on the S1 truss that is slightly ajar. The astronauts are the, are the lucky people who get to ride the rocket. We've got the glamour job, we get our names in the paper, we have a lot of fun. But there are, for every one of us, there are a thousand people who are just as educated or, or skilled or, or, or diligent or dedicated to their work. It's, uh, it's pretty uh, awe-inspiring to go and visit all the folks that uh, end up working on the uh, space shuttle and space station programs. It's a, it's a big, big team. It's, a, uh, it's an honor to meet these folks. Uh, they, they shoulder a, a big load. The, the, the safety and success of every mission is on their shoulders, and, uh, and I'm very appreciative for all the good work that they do for our program.